then I uh, thought of like, okay, like exploring data science as an option as a career. And after gaining some experience, I realized, okay, data science is just not limited to, you know, what we've seen so far. And it really takes a lot of extra skills that we need to develop. So that is how I, you know, started preparing for my GRE. I had, uh, you know, taken, it, it, it takes, it's a, it's a bit difficult because you're working, you have deadlines to meet as well, but definitely it's not impossible. Like if you put your mind to it, everything is achievable. So I gave my TOEFL in 2019 itself. I was planning on coming immediately last year, but then uh, due to the pandemic, I decided to postpone my idea and also the classes would have been online. But then it's like everyone we would love to have, you know, in-person classes. Mm. So that was right. another reason I, you know, I chose to defer my admission process. So I did my application and I gave my GRE in December 2020. And uh, I did, I was a bit behind schedule, but then uh, to cope up, I, you know, just started applying early and like I was late according to the general timeline that was there for applications. So I did all my applications around January and got the results by March, April. And then, you know, the whole visa process happens. Like when you, you know, get the admits, you need to decide which university you want to go to. And that's how. So you goes. went for spring 2021, right? No, I, I have come here for fall 2021. That is my, just oh. my I started my okay. classes two weeks ago. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, so, uh, as she said, as you would like the question answer round, so we do have for it sure. for you that Definitely. everyone can enjoy it and everyone, please put your question in the chat box. If you have any questions, I would ask your, your, her on your behalf. So can we start with the question answer round now? Are you sure, ready? Definitely. It? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm definitely ready. Okay. We'll just start with it. So we have covered your journey. So we won't talk about it now because you have described uh -huh. all your journey till now. So um, this first question is very interesting. And uh, I also mm -hmm. gave recently my GRE. So I really oh. want to know that, yeah. uh, do you really think that academics has helped you to reach uh, reach at this position? Because they, uh, I, I know for sure that in USA, they uh, scale your score, uh, academic score out of four. Okay. And they do say that it's very important to score like about three or three at least. So do you really yes. think that academics has helped you? Yes, it definitely has. Uh, I think the score that you're talking on a scale of four is usually WES evaluation uh, that is provided by World Education Services. So even I, or the university that I am currently studying in required me to, you know, uh, like change my scores to uh, on a scale of four. So, yeah, and it is true that you really academics really matters because my score out of four was around 3.48 and uh, okay. it is all because of the undergrad score. So it is really important that you focus, especially on whichever year you are in, just make sure that you get a really good pointer. And it is not difficult. I mean, it's it's not difficult. You might think it, it seems unachievable, but then no, if you just put your mind to it, it, it is possible and you can get a really decent score. And like take advantages of the fact that, okay, like whichever, how much of a time you get, you decide which, how many hours you want to invest into what, and just put that, you know, dedication to it and you will, you know, be able to do it. So uh, you're in US or in, even in Canada, you see, you give very much importance to your grades. Like, even if you get a poor GRE score, they will really focus, like give you an admit, even if you have a good background or a good, uh, you know, academics score. Usually people here prefer a pointer of about eight or nine. Uh, like if you want a really good university, you should have a pointer that should aim for nine and above. But then uh, like mine was less than eight. It was almost 7.89. But then I think the additional job experience and everything helps as well. So that covers up the loss of not having a good grade. Yeah, you have so much experience and you have done so, many, so much work in the college. I think... I, I think it would of course overshadow the other thing. Yes, um, because here I as like I also have my classmates who have scores of 314, 320. So it's like it, it mine was not that high, but then yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It's all about how much efforts and your profile you're building and how well you are able to present it. Presentation is really more important. And that's I would say that is what helps you. 
there is one question to ask mohini okay. one question here mohini i yeah. if i remember and i have been your guide also so yes. you were really very enthusiastic energetic and you were a treasurer of isa and technical secretary also for our yes. alacrity so you had that quality of you know of being a leader and uh, that is i think very much important and apart from that as you just said uh, mm-hmm. presentation skill and you know that nowadays soft skill play very much important role in the professional as well as the technical world so mm-hmm. i would like uh, you to share uh, like being a volunteer taking initiative and being a leadership uh, having leadership quality how it is important and what you can do uh, to build that okay uh thank you ma'am for the question and the appreciation as well uh okay so initially i like i don't know if it's possible to believe but then i lacked confidence a lot i know it it might seem a bit hard to believe sometimes but then i lacked confidence like anything so when i joined undergrad i was like okay scared to even you know like do something so it is it just takes someone to just believe in you and push you a bit and you know that's what all my professors and everyone in the you know, like in my undergrad school has done it just gave me that one reason to believe in myself and then you know it's it's possible so even the communication skills like we used to have so many trainings also like people, yeah. some students didn't bother to attend it and i really feel bad for them like they missed out on so much like all of those trainings you might feel that okay they are not important or we know this ye to aata hai karke no that attitude doesn't really help everything that you learn in your undergrad every moment it just uh, you know grab as much as you can from it every single training is important so we used to have like so many communication uh, tra- skills training sessions i really remember that and it it has helped me like views i i don't remember a professor uh, that uh, you know trainer's name but then he had told us like you just got to do it for yourself nobody is going to come and do it for you so it's right. like you have to take the initiative see and it's not even like the language should be a barrier to you make mistakes you learn from it like nobody is going to judge you if they are judging you let them judge you at the end you have to you know cross all the barriers and you know you want to achieve success in your life so there will be hurdles but then you just got to again I, like i always been saying put your mind to it it's it's possible so communication skills like to be honest they play the most crucial role like be it verbal or written you should also have very good written uh, you know skills of communication because uh, when you go for a job most of the times you know you are asked to send emails to your client to your uh, you know managers and everything everyone you have to write emails so email etiquettes are something that you you know it should be you know involved in you like from your undergrad as well like that you can you know add on to your training or something and that will help you and verbal uh, it's like you know group activity or something can usually help you so if you feel like you know you can just communicate with your friends in english like just make it a practice like make it a daily you know part and parcel of your life to just communicate in english or whichever business language is going in the world like in uh, i think in the world there are two languages that uh, you know are the business languages one is japanese and one is english so uh, of course we will prefer english because that is what we even learned so far but then just stick on to one language and focus on that and i think it will be helpful okay um can we now jump to next question because i think i can see like uh whole sure. bunch of questions that people have posted <laughs> over here yeah so, we are uh, having questions in chat but we will take that at the end you okay. continue yeah fine mm-hmm. uh there is one question uh, i would love to ask you that mm-hmm. if you come to the college after some years after doing your ms and uh, after maybe pursuing a job there and you come mm-hmm. you visit the college how would you feel like imagine now ki how would you feel after coming to the college after so many years what would be your reaction uh, i feel nostalgic definitely i'll feel nostalgic uh, you know even uh, when i was doing my job and i had come to you know seek the letter of recommendation from uh, hod ma'am so i remember coming to the university and i was like you know just in awe again okay i was every time you know i actually cross the university many times when i go outside from my home i used to go out and every time i used to see the building i used to be like okay i miss coming here i really miss coming here i used to just 
stand at the gate and has to be like okay i miss this building a lot and even with my mother i'm not kidding it like even i and my mom used to be like okay we used to study or do you miss it i'm like i miss it every single day like it, 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 it was the best yeah it's the best journey for me right oh uh, i feel that everyone like us like after second year i'm missing that journey because we haven't <laughs> been to the college for like long time but we yeah. can live through you like vicariously yeah it, it has a good campus you know trust me our campus uh, it, it's really nice it is pleasant and and the views of course from the 6th floor who can you know who can beat that it's just amazing uh, right oh uh, okay we'll go to next question sure um so i think this question is very interesting because uh, it says about the networking how you build your networking amongst professionals to grow your career because i think networking is isn't taught by anyone you have to like grasp True. it on yourself so how True. did you do that uh for me there were two point of contacts uh professionally uh, i was fortunate for 6 months that i got to go to the office uh during the off- okay so i'll just say the first two uh, ones you know that is linkedin and facebook these two are the you know most crucial ways of you know connecting with people so just you know whichever source you want to connect with like for example i wanted to connect with my university or you know seniors or something so i just type the name on linkedin so i used to get you know the list of contacts and i used to you know or when you send a request i'll just give you a tip like when you send someone a connection request make it a habit to add a note you know instead of sending the request directly just add a note saying that how do you know the person or why do you want to connect with the person because if you add that note it adds a personal touch that you took the effort of you know understanding whom you're sending the request to and why do you want to connect with that person obviously the person will accept your request but then it adds a personal connection that you took the initiative yourself first is that so and facebook will also you know it usually helps like sometimes you know linkedin does tell you that you know this person is viewed your profile and you are like you don't want immediately that person to know so maybe you know you can just try seeing what the person people are doing on facebook where are they working and you can get to know a lot about them as well and uh, regarding uh, you know how i started networking in my uh, office so uh, like build your connection very well with your H- hr and your managers they are the ones who are the pillars of the company like who are going to be with you and going to you know tell you what to do so you know you have to be on really good terms with them good terms as in just understand and build the net like you know connection with them understand what is expected from you like you should always have the learner's attitude first of all okay you are here you need to learn something from them so just try to understand what you want to learn from them and uh, just be involved in all the activities that happen around like even in my uh, company we used to have several activities we used to have diwali mela we used to have some founders day celebration we used to have some csr activities so i used to just you know meet people because of that and i was in a pune i was in the pune office which had you know around 200 or 250 employees only so because of that i am sure i at least have met half of them like literally i have met all of them and they know me and i know them at least by face for sure if not by name so it is very important that you interact with people it, it could be subtle ways you just greet them hello hi just listen to them pick uh, just ask them how how is your day going what are you doing how is work just because we used to have breaks right so during the break you can walk up to people and ask them in the uh, my company's headquarters are in san jose which is really close from my university so the culture was already invited in my company in pune as well so it is like you, any person can walk up to you or you can walk up to them and start a conversation and there is no hesitation at all it's like they only make you feel so like you know welcoming that you you can just walk up to them and start talking like i i remember i was the only one who directly asked the ceo a question so everyone else was like how can you directly ask the ceo a question and i was like why do we need to be afraid he doesn't know me yet and i don't know him yet why why the hesitation so just go ahead and ask the ceo whatever you want to ask so it should it, it's just about your confidence that matters at that point and you know it help so you need to network with as many people as you can for instance uh, i i'm sorry i'm just extending the answer for instance uh, the it's fine in- we are loving to hear you <laughs> um, thank you it's like uh, for instance the digital main internship i had done so uh, he, the office is in uh, san uh, sunnyvale here only in california which is around 15 20 minutes from here 
the head of the company you know pinged me on uh, you know linkedin and said that okay he's glad to know that i'm in santa clara so it it really brings you know the connect that okay we just right. spoke to him once in the uni- in, during my undergrad but then that networking did help me like that person remembers me so it's a, it's a really good thing same way my manager uh, she's now the director she's been promoted recently she pinged me on linkedin knowing that okay w- w- if regarding the summer internships i had asked so she reached out to me so it helps like you know you just need to connect with them once or twice and then you get understand like you know how it's going to help you eventually so that's it yeah i think there is so much to learn from you you directly <laughs> talk to the ceo <laughs> so and that's a great tip like uh, even uh, on the linkedin that texting the people while requesting yeah. them that's really good because that will that will add a personal touch over there correct so i think yeah i think everyone is benefited from this answer because networking is very important crucial in now time now time right yes uh i'm just flabbergasted by your answer i'm like okay i'll just imbibe everything what is your she saying <laughs> <laughs> definitely you you all can definitely reach out to me after the session also any time you know if you want to understand something more about me or how i did something so feel free oh, no. okay uh we we'll, i think everyone use that opportunity and we'll then go to next question which of your personal traits and professional mm-hmm. skills help you the most Okay so my professional skills would be my communication skills because i used to uh, literally be a bookworm like i used to read like crazy uh, in from my school days like uh, i used to bring home i used to finish like i regret i feel bad that i don't read that much now but then i used to read like at least two novels every week like i used to finish wow. them yeah so it's like you need to develop your communication skills be it verbal written spoken like whichever one non verbal also you know your hand gestures the way you're trying to communicate something so everything matters and you know all these soft skills trainings like whichever the uh, you know our uh, colleges are organizing like it will help you definitely so the personality skills that of mine that i've developed so far are the communication skills and also i am a bit of inquisitive nature it's like i just want to know how something happened why something happened and how i can do it so if you are always inquisitive about something you you know you'll learn more definitely you'll learn more from anything and everything so yeah that's great um so be inquisitive that's what she is trying to say so that will help True. you know um, yeah okay so there's next question how can we mm-hmm. approach students for counseling like how can faculty approach students for counseling uh, which mm-hmm. means how can they uh, how can they make students you know open up in front of them and solve, try to solve the problems or discuss the problems with them uh, how can so, we do that yeah mostly what we can approach them is the way by organizing of course non technical sessions because uh, this is not something technical right and you can organize you know group activities for them where you know like uh, like some of it could be like group discussions the ones that are usually then in the interview but then you know you can take up recent topics and just let them talk first and you know build up the ice breaking you know sessions such that you know they feel comfortable in speaking with you and then maybe you know you can conduct small uh, activities or trainings that are you know included in the soft skill sessions also so uh, i am Mohini, not sure if i'm understanding you but uh-huh. if you remember in our uh, college we are having that practice of having one to one counseling with the students and mm-hmm. uh, that practice we are still following here but okay. again uh, 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 you also know that while that counseling session many students though we want that it is completely one to one so that you can share whatever problems or issues mm-hmm. that you are facing so mm-hmm. what do you think uh, like what we can do so so that the student will open up uh, in the counseling sessions or any uh, suggestion you would like to give based on that first of all i would like to say to the students that there is nothing to be ashamed of if you feel that you need help for anything like never feel ashamed about that fact because you need help and you need to sort it out so there is no harm in you know seeking uh, any guidance related thing from anyone 
especially because your counselors are there and you know if they keep it anonymous so you don't have to worry that you know whatever you're going to tell your counselor is going to be you know leaked anywhere because trust me you everyone maintains that integrity it is in the mindset of everyone and you just need to give your fear up so don't hesitate first of all to ask whatever help you need and um, i think once you and it's like if you feel like okay someone's going to you know uh, and get to know that you're you know seeking help or something like that we uh, just you know privately message your uh, you know teacher or advisor whoever is there and just request them can i have the session after this time or can we do it over a zoom call or something like that so that i feel more comfortable about it and i think that the teacher or the you know whoever the uh, counselor is will understand that like and they will also be like okay this makes more sense like maybe the person is shy to come and talk to me in person so uh, and also if you want you can you know ask your friend also first you know like see i am feeling shy to go and ask this or i am scared to ask this or because maybe you know someone will judge me or you know give me a bad grade or something okay if you are so scared literally ask your friend to do that for you on your behalf and if you like obviously you would have one friend at least who will you know listen to you and you know ask it on your behalf so you know if you like to be honest you should not have any fear like you know because even in our university we have you know free counseling sessions you know in our or uh, you know you can you, it's like it has to be anonymous so you know that helps or maybe you know you can collect first information about what kind of you know uh, issues that you know the uh, children are facing like maybe you can have some not exactly a quiz but then you know you can take a survey or something and understand okay what are the general issues that as an audience uh, is facing to maybe understand and you know decide the activities or plan of action okay. yeah thanks i can see in the chat box also there are many questions related to your higher study so i think uh, we can take one question on this higher study abroad how it affects uh, uh, the future career mm-hmm. growth um, and uh, i think you can because you are also pursuing ms you can please, uh-huh. uh, tell students how it is helpful and uh, how it uh, will definitely help them for the future in with respect to career sure so uh, as i had said in the beginning that you know i did my undergraduation you know in uh, assms so uh, when i was joining my company i was a clean slate for them so like i already said that they offered me two options so it's like you know it helps if you have certain technical skills already with you so during my undergrad we had you know data structures and analysis of algorithms and everything so those subjects operating system computer networking all these subjects you know they help you build a general profile for yourself so when you are given the choice you know what you are good at and that helps you decide what path you want to choose so i was like initially from many years like i was into this ai ml thing and data science so i was actually genuinely interested in going into that field so it is and also it is of course a booming technology one of the booming industries and i wanted to know more about it so the main thing is you need to research on your end too you just can't be dependent okay someone told me to do this someone just gave me this i'll go ahead with it no you need to do your own uh, research and understand why something is going to help you why should i do this like just don't be like one of the sheep you know you need to understand why you're doing something so after uh, like i chose data science so they asked me to go through the training and after going through the training uh, it was a self paced learning so i was given the time and i had to do my own training so they then they you know deployed me on a project and you know made me face different clients and everything so uh, it's like after i got the exposure like i wasn't uh, on the front end for, of the client interaction but i was at the back side of the data science part so it was uh, you know while doing all that i was working with several senior data scientists also in my team and then it was that point where i realized okay i need more skills because you know my skills are uh, they are good enough for a, to be a beginner but then i will need additional experience and it's like to be honest if i would have stayed in the company i would have got that experience as well but the thing is you know you need to get, get give yourself that time also to gain those skills so that yeah. is why i decided to pursue yeah. my masters so we oh, have also like, started ai and data science in our uh, institution as a new branch for your yes 
yes so you know that will actually help you gain the proper skills required now when we i was there we didn't have that like proper yeah. department for it so uh, i to, chose to you know take a gap so that's why i oh, you know started deciding to pursue my masters in it mm. and i am sure that once i would have completed my masters i will definitely be in a better position to apply for jobs like that will you know uh, suit my career interest so the main thing is again that you really need to understand like what you are interest uh, interested in so right right so you should, you should be clear what you want actually from the course exactly then and, and it's important yeah it, it's not limited it. yeah it's not limited to just the booming technologies if you are really interested in coding and you know in the deep end technologies of you know if you think c++ is my main domain go ahead there are companies like uh, you know google apple you know all the top end niche companies they do go for these only skills so you it's not necessary you have to learn python or you have to do java or something like that that will you know get you the job so it's just you have to you know understand what you want to do and see if there's an opportunity available for that okay okay so that's a great uh, suggestion for everyone like find what you want actually from the career from what you want to do and then pursue ms if you want to go for ms so don't correct. go as you know blind sided yes right. correct just because everyone is uh, doing you don't have to do it right uh, so we'll move to next question mm -hmm. um with respect to current market scenario what do you mm -hmm. think uh, in which area students should upgrade themselves where should uh, they work on i can give a brief uh, you know opinion from my data science perspective so but then again i am doing computer science and engineering so i am just not limiting myself to only data science opportunities so mostly mathematics like if you just hate math then just, you know i'll suggest don't go towards analytics side or data science side because math is the core of everything over here but if you want you are interested into you know coding or, or you know something like like coding or you know back end development front end development then at that point i would say the data structures and algorithms will you know really help you but uh, if you are interested in cloud computing then you need to understand everything about cloud like you need to get into the you know proper training and understand because i understand that when we do it in undergrad we are introduced to the topics so what you want to pursue at the end again you'll have to you know like work up and build your career, you know build up on all of that then again i would say that you know programming language i would i wouldn't say that learn everything just stick to one but you know be a master of that so don't be a jack of all try to be a master of one at least so it's good if you know because then you'll again open opportunities but then if you are presented with a problem and you're not able to solve then you know that becomes a puddle that you're not supposed to be in so if it's if you're com comfortable with just one programming language be it because companies when if you uh, you know when you appear for interviews they give you the option to choose which language you want to write the code in so at that point if you have chosen the language that you want to do you know you're you're good to go whichever language you choose because the company right. just wants to know that you understand yeah. the basic concepts if you're yeah. good with the concepts they can of course train you just the language the languages won't be difficult it's just the syntax that changes from one language to the other so uh, I, I think we are having a very good question in line with whatever you are saying in uh -huh. the chat it is like can you please elaborate more on your internships because you had mm -hmm. done so many internships here so can mm -hmm. you elaborate more on internship and how did they help you uh uh in making your decision related to your career sure so uh to go ahead with that my some of the internships were non technical if you've seen my profile so the one if you see about intern shala it was just promoting the you know intern shala uh, as a student like as a student partner i was supposed to promote how internships are important and you know i used to conduct i conducted one peer session also for the uh, my juniors batch that i told them like how you know what is the power of the internships and how you should get one so that was again a non technical one the swachh bharat was again re related to cleaning and you know like we went to vagoli and we did all the cleaning uh, coming to business analyst so that helped me you know gain skills about documentation like how we should document everything 
like for instance if there is a you know product requirement and you know from a client you need to understand so you need to prepare a proper document that you can give to the technical guy who will then build up the product right so directly between the client and the uh, technical guy you need to have someone who you know translates it so that is when i learned how to you know document it and you know write that uh, like i used to create a functional requirement uh, document that is frds and brds that is business requirement documents so these help uh, these help me understand okay what all is required and since i was from an it background and you know product development is also part of it it helped me understand it they made me write that because i would have a better understanding of both worlds they also helped me you know write how to write a user manual for one of their websites so that helped me understand okay like we build websites right we've all tried to build at least a basic website in our undergrad yeah. so when we build it we don't think about how the user is going to interpret it right so to think from the user's perspective i wrote the document i wrote a user manual so that is when i was understanding and developing my skills at the same time and then i came finally to my final year project uh, the digital main internship that you know the uh, our you know, our college had provided us the opportunity with so that was all about an ai ml project so that actually you know again piqued my interest like okay i want to learn more about all of this that's why even when i got, uh, like my internship we developed a you know uh, like it was a similar question identification like if there's a question that is asked on quora so you know it is repetitively asked so it shouldn't take time to you know give you the answer if it's a comp- repetitive question so we used to you know we build a uh, it was an nlp project and deep learning project so it's too much technical that i won't go into that right now but then that is how it you know piqued my interest and it was it's like what you do and what interests you should always you know go hand in hand like it shouldn't be like you're interested in something else and you're doing something else so the minute you gain all that knowledge and you can you know you're good to apply you know so i'm sorry if i've deviated from the question but then uh, yeah so all this you know was just keep on adding and you know making me realize okay i need more skills i need more skills so it's yeah. like okay i had to take a stand yeah. okay i will because see money can be earned any time but you know if knowledge is there knowledge will only eventually help you gain the money also if you just thinking from that perspective so i took a stand i'm like okay i need to gain my skills and i decided to pursue my masters right okay so we'll i think move to next question last question um sure. we'll take it from the chat box so uh, sure. the question is did you face any difficulties while preparing for the gre and even for the english proficiency language which we which would be ielts if you give ielts or toefl so what were the challenges you faced okay uh, so to be honest for toefl i didn't face much of a challenge because i had already been building my communication skills from a long time like since my childhood i've been reading like anything so that wasn't difficult but then i know my friends who have who are also preparing simultaneously you know for the exams so what i always tell them is read articles the one specially that don't interest you at all because for toefl and uh, the ielts exam i'm not sure about ielts but at least i know for toefl that you get paragraphs and everything from things that non uh, science people you know usually uh, you know study so that it could be from law it could be from you know something historic events that happened so always i know if if because i am not much interested into history or even the law or you know the proper law or, you know all the rules and the regulations and everything uh it's a different law it's not the indian laws it's uh, the us ones so it's a lot complicated one so you know you should make a habit to read as many articles you can because you know if you read at least one or two articles it could be a short paragraph it doesn't have to be you know a huge story book or something you don't have to do that but if you just get yourself acquainted or you know acquainted with all the words and everything so that will definitely help you prepare for your toefl for gre well i faced issues a bit with my quant because i wasn't that you know comfortable with my quant so because whatever you do it is all what you have learned in your high school or your you know like when you were in school it's like permutation i mean you do it in your undergrad as well permutation combination and everything but then you know over the time you sometimes lose touch over those concepts but and the questions in the gre are not as simple as the ones that you think are in your textbook of you know high school math or something so the main key is uh, if I, i know i'm just giving you a gre training session but then it would just be like you know go ahead and you know practice like practice has to be done mm. and it has to be done every day 
I was doing my job and I was doing this. It was a bit difficult for me. But then or it's it's like you have to practice and you have to take out time for yourself and for your you know preparation. It it doesn't take much time because it will take max around uh, three months at max I would say to prepare for your GRE and you know just two to three weeks if you are good with your communication skills. So English doesn't like the TOEFL part doesn't take time, and it's like you are already preparing for your verbal section in your GRE. So then again TOEFL is covered up in that. Uh, I'm not again sure about IELTS, but I if I get some information from my younger sibling who's also prepared who's given his IELTS recently. i can you know you know get you all in touch with him and you all can probably ask him about it exactly okay thank you for that question even i am giving my toefl in this two weeks so that uh-huh. could be what that is a great advice for someone who is going who is going to give yeah. it all the so practice yeah. oh. is the key for cracking toefl and gr yes a uh, toefl if you have like bought the main set you know that should be good to go you are good to go if you can you know just finish that oh, preparation material it's mm-hmm. it's more than enough uh, and just keep listening to conversations in us english you know because your people don't speak the way you know our indian english is they have a you know a diff- uh, it's slightly different but then it's like you need to understand how they speak because they are also not from like the same state right they have different states in the us they might be all speaking english but they all have their own lingual you know tones to it so just practice more of that okay. and uh, it's a personal suggestion from my personal experience about the speaking uh, like i remember when i was giving my toefl exam it's like it usually starts at the same time for almost everyone in the room so the person sitting right next to you on your left and right are going to speak at the same time so you have to make sure you are focused on your or you know exam so when you are give you know preparing also just make sure you are preparing in an environment where there is a lot of noise that will train you that when you are sitting in your exam you won't be distracted because you cannot you know hush someone down sitting next to you like okay let me also speak no you can't do that right so it's <laughs> right. like you have to train yourself right. so you know it's like if you have you know kids playing around your house just sit there and try focusing and giving your exam there like you being fortunately they have at home version now at home version <laughs> for toefl so that's a boon for us yeah like we don't have to go for test centers right yeah. um, okay True. there is next round now uh, which is i think will be fun for everyone it's okay. rapid fire round so it's going okay. to be rapid and i i'm i'm hoping that your answers will be full of fire let's uh, <laughs> sure. go for the round then um right. okay uh tell me the three things which you missed in the college life which you miss now which you had in college life okay Oh, uh, first three thing things. would be alacrity. Okay, that event. I am not sure how many of you all have experienced it, but then that was that one thing that you know gave me the most exposure, most opportunities. Uh, you know, it it helped me network to so many people. Like you know, I was I said I was a volunteer as well, right? So we were used we were usually sent to campaign in different universities in Pune. So that is when you're interacting with total strangers, complete strangers. You have to convince them. You're selling them your, you know, a product. So you, it's 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 like a new experience. Like, and you don't have anyone to guide you. But when you get that first, you know, when you sell that first ticket to someone, like just by speaking to them, it's it's a different kind of a pleasure. You know, it's like literally you feel happy that okay, you're good of, you're capable of something. So you know, alacrity, like all I used to like. you know be active in all of the alacrity events yeah. like literally all so that i think is one of the things that i miss like a lot and you know second would be the library i mean that is where i used to study most of the time like i always was in the li- like i wouldn't say i was always in the library but whenever i had my exams i used to study in the library even on saturdays i used to come all the way from home just to study in the library and third thing that i miss would be our campus i would say it's really good you know it's sometimes really good to just stroll around in the campus sit in the cafeteria just be with your friends and everything and of course you you know it's, it's a pretty view from you know seeing pune from you know a height yeah so you're going through nostalgia now Uh, yeah. Ask you the question. It, it's been a month, but then I'm like, okay, I miss Pune badly. It's like I really miss badly. <laughs> we can understand you that we also miss the college now. 
Yeah. Um, the second question is very tricky one, and I, if I was you, I would have thought through before answering this question. <laughs> Two okay. teachers, which you admire the most? Oh God. Okay. Well, that is a tough question. Um. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I have truly appreciated each and every one of my teachers. It's like all the subjects that they have taught me and the skills they have taught me. It's like. It is always something to learn, you know. If it's not the subject, it's the people skills they have, the way they t- talk to you, the way they are good orators. Also, you know, you just—it's not always about the technical thing. So I'm, it's it's really difficult to choose, you know. It's it's really difficult. So if you talk, uh, ask me about technical one, then it would definitely be Jamadar sir. I mean, he's like yeah. the he's I everyone's know. favorite. Yeah, so his you know object oriented uh, programming and I guess data structures and files or something. So you Fundament know those data structures. Yeah, those yeah. subjects are like really important, and the way he teaches is also amazing. Like you, you just get it through your head, and uh, it's like uh, if you talk about you know non technical, then I would actually go ahead with Mali, ma'am. Like she has always you know. Helped us, you know, get connected with seniors. Also, she used to like, you know, she's always uh, motivated us. Like, like you need to do this. You you should do this. Why are you all, you know, lazy? It's, it's like true. Like, you know, you we didn't realize it then, but you know, when you get out of the university, you realize that okay, we were just not, you know, doing the best to our potential. Like, ma- ma'am always recommends that, you know, like you all just do it. You know, don't do this. Behave professionally. Like, you know, that time we are in our own zone. We just want to enjoy the life. But then, trust me, once you get out, the professionalism is what will lead you on into the world. And ma'am has always. I'm so poorly uh, from that experience of eight stars on telling this because we had, uh, uh, I yes. had a very bad scolding to you on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> but uh, to be very honest, I uh, do that even now. I think Shivani uh-huh. will uh, had also the experience of the same. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. everyone has that experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we'll go to the next question. Sure. Uh, what do uh, do you think there is something that they don't teach in your EU in the college which you should probably mm-hmm. know? well uh, to be honest your undergrad only teaches you everything like uh, it literally teaches you to you know it changes you as a person like it changed me really like till 12th i i was like okay we are in the school we are in the safe zone there's nothing that's you know you know that i I used to feel like very I'm still a uh, you know nice bird or something you know I who doesn't know how to fly or something but it's like undergrad life actually teaches you everything ha huh. there's an advantage like if you get to experience the hostel life i mean that would be something that you know nothing can be matched okay i know like you guys are missing out on that as well because even i did i am born and brought up in pune so i just you know studied everything from pune so but then after coming here i have realized okay it's not about the restrictions of parents trust me i'm not going towards that side it's about oh, you know just trying to learn to be on your own and not to be dependent on anyone for anything like the because see in india it's our culture that we you know are you know oh, our parents you know guide us about everything they are there for us in, in our undergrad our teachers are there for us but as a person when do you actually grow when you will be on your own right so mm-hmm. i think sometimes i feel that my friends who were in the hostel they were like you know getting those skills earlier than me because i could see them you know dealing with finances so efficiently and you know smartly that i feel like okay they are getting to you know experience the real hand life so it's like just try somehow that you get to experience or you do you know develop yourself accordingly that you become independent enough and you know you can do anything you want that way okay so the so the hostel life that's what you miss and uh, you know the the way your uh, peers handle the finances correct you you think that that would be the thing that you actually should have learned in college or something that's what it is yes okay yes um okay so we'll jump to next question now mm-hmm. um three subjects which you studied the most maybe you love the subject or maybe you hated the subject so that you had to study the most them the most which were the three uh, subjects it would be da that is design analysis of algorithms i loved that subject but then when i was studying it i was like okay this is a bit tricky because you have to learn a lot of algorithms 
second was operating system uh it, it's a very interesting subject and uh, computer architecture i wasn't really a fan of it but then i had to study it because we had it in this a syllabus and the funny part is all these three subjects i'm doing it again because they are my compulsory subjects for my masters program i don't have an option so it's like uh, but then these three subjects are really entertaining like you know it, there's so much to learn like trust me i i didn't you know pursue it well when i was in my undergrad but then now it's like i literally still remember those concepts it's been what like four years or something i studied them but then it's like it really helps you know to it's like what you learn is what you actually apply because here when you you know you're going to apply for internships or something it's these subjects that are you know at least da is one subject that you really need to you know be on your toes you know you should know like at the blink of an eye if someone asks you even in your sleep so you should know the algorithms like really well if you are want to go into the development side that is what i will say okay i think uh, all those teachers who taught you those subjects would be happy knowing your answer and you're still learning this like those subjects um yeah. so the next question is on a scale of 1 to 10 how mm-hmm. excited are you about your life right now like you're living in the us studying in us how excited you are how enthusiastic are you so it's 10 on 10 i wish i could be more, give a uh, rating more than that but then it's actually 10 on 10 it's like amazing it's it's amazing you know uh, the culture is amazing so it's like people your people are like over oh, here trust me but indians really help indians at the end of the day like i have met some really good communities over here indian communities who are you know really helpful and it's it's a nice experience you know it's different but it's nice i i wouldn't uh, say okay, okay now you, you, if someone is planning to do it in india just do it it doesn't matter if you're doing it in the us or in india it's just that the experience is a bit better i would say but then at the end of the day it doesn't matter if your focus is you know at the end of the day it's to you know better your skills and get a good job so it doesn't really matter if it's just going to us or canada or australia or something it's it's the same but just i feel it's a bit better than what i was because i've been in the same place for so long so probably my answer would be biased because of that okay uh i i can feel the enthusiasm even through the call <laughs> so uh the last book the next question is the last book you read mm-hmm. you read a lot you said just said that you are bookworm yeah. yeah so last book before i came here actually i haven't got a time you know i was just settling up my home over here so before i came here even till the last second last day i remember i was reading uh sita uh, it's a book by uh, amish uh, he has written amish tripathi correct amish so, tripathi yes so he has written ramchandra series so i was reading sita i even bought ravan but then i couldn't you know i just forgot it you know while i was leaving for the airport so i i forgot to get that book with me but then it's like that book usually focuses on you know one of the the ramchandra series focuses on one character at a time like ram sita ravan and then you know the final drama and story will continue eventually but then it's like it focuses on sita's character and you know it combines like mythology with uh, you know with some of fiction which you know will help the current generation to read it like see i wasn't a huge fan of the historical stuff as i had already said but then it's like this mythological part was really interesting because of the way amish has written it and it really you know helps you connect back and learn all the values eventually so that's great he always writes in a scientific view that's yes. what i actually excites yes. everyone like yes. at least people of uh, who have tech technical background that's Correct. why maybe take them into it um so yes. there is a notice for students that uh, the the ma'am has posted uh, the attendance form and the attendance link and the feedback form so please don't miss out on that uh, fill both the forms and yeah okay so the you like uh, mr tripathi's book coming back to you yeah so i have already read shiva trilogy as well uh, yeah. it was like those three books only inspired me to actually go ahead and buy his next mm. three so you know books as well so but then i have read a lot of genres so i've read harry potter i've read sherlock holmes uh i've read a lot many books like um like i am big fan of my shiva trilogy i will connect you after the session definitely <laughs> definitely <laughs> 
um okay we'll jump to next question is what was the first lie you told your family because of college life i really want to know this answer i hope this session is not recorded <laughs> just kidding um well uh, there was one holiday that we had i guess somewhere oh, i don't remember in my first year or second year and it was a holiday okay and i really wanted to know my classmates as i think it was in first year in the first semester itself so we all you know planned a trip and we went to khadakwasla we went to sriagarh and i just told my parents okay we just have some activity in the college you know we'll be back by 4 or something so we went early in the morning at 8 we just went to khadakwasla we went to sriagarh we had those onion fritters that is the kanda bhaji and we just came back before you know the college but then yeah that was i guess my first lie but then, yes of course i tell my elder brother everything before i do something so just to be on safe side if you are ever going to plan something like that just let someone know that you're going you know because in india we've seen incidents happen so be careful also but yeah i had lied to them for the first time so, so uh, i'm sorry you burned the college Bunk it was a college. holiday it was a holiday so oh, technically i didn't bunk okay. the college i just didn't tell them that it was a holiday <laughs> that was the only thing okay fine we'll accept that answer we'll think that you are <laughs> t- t- telling the whole truth so yeah. um the next question is what is your priority i think this is very personal question um they depend mm-hmm. on individual to individual money mm-hmm. or knowledge what is your priority between both blink of an eye it's a knowledge it has to be knowledge it, see money can be earned by doing literally anything if you go to a mcd mm. or, you know an outlet you can start working there you'll get money but is that really your goal you do you want to settle for that like no right you don't want to settle for that like at 10 years down the line if you just start working right now at mcd you'll still learn that much only you won't your salary won't have increased as much as you would have expected but then the knowledge will help you gain so many skills that you can get anything that you want and you know there is literally no age limit here people you know they start opening their own startups at right at 40 as soon as they turn 40 they have their two or three startups so it's like they didn't give up right they didn't get back in their couch and they just settled for what they got they were on their toes they're like nahi we want to do this next we want to do this next so it's really inspiring to have people like that around you so i would just say that you know give priority your knowledge and it doesn't matter what age you start learning it there's no age limit for learning i even had one teacher in my uh, school she still te- goes to zumba classes okay like trust me she would be over 50 or 60 i'm not sure she never revealed her age to us but then uh, she goes to zumba classes and i am just in awe of her you know it's it's amazing that she still has all that enthusiasm in her and you know she inspire it's so inspiring right like you feel like okay now i've done enough i should settle and i'm good with what i have no you should always have a you know an, a little fire inside you to just keep learning that's why i think knowledge is definitely more important than money right um uh, the next question is when you got to know that you have been accepted in santa clara university and then now you are going to your you know for your ms mm-hmm. were you scared were you anxious because you are actually landing in a foreign world like you are going to the next another country where you have seen nothing you know nothing so were you scared mm-hmm. or you were chill no you got this that's what that was your, your uh, attitude or you were scared anxious so oh, for 2 3 weeks after i got my admit i still couldn't believe that i'm actually going to go because I, as i said i've been bro- born and brought up in pune so it's like i'm going to leave the whole country and go so it, it was scary it was initially scary like okay okay I'm, it, it still hasn't hit me you know sometimes i'm okay like okay i'm just like in another state or in another city i'm just away from home i'm going to go back but no it, it will hit you eventually that no you are away in another country so it took me a while to accept that i was a bit scared but then it's it's okay it's okay it's completely fine you know it's going to be a good experience and it is going to be a good experience you just have to have that positive mindset and you know it, it really helps you yeah yeah right um so the next question is um mm-hmm. where would you feel better in india or in us like coming back to like where you feel better in or living in india or living in us 
uh see it's it's like i would personally prefer to not even stay in the us i would prefer to explore more countries it's like wherever the world takes me it's literally like that because if you just think how huh, us is better than india then you will just have the mindset that india is not better no it's not that way india mm-hmm. has also so many opportunities that is picking up the pace you know uh, honestly uh, the data science and machine learning you never know you know just two or five years down the line india would be at the top of everything and it is going to happen eventually in the technological world half uh, india is going to rise like crazy so you cannot really say that you know us is better than india because trust me half the people over here who own like anything are indians so at the end it's it's about okay if 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 you just see money matter then it okay people do come here for the sole reason but then it's like i feel that you should give back to your country because you know it has given you so much at the end of the day because uh, like i don't want to say something bad about any of the countries but then you know our country has really amazing education programs like i i have noticed that difference from you know many of the students over here like in it's like it really doesn't matter where you go but it's like you should not just stay at one place keep exploring keep learning that's what i can say you want to move from uh, from places to places you want to explore true. every like every each country if you could yeah so. why like see we all know that japan is like crazy fast so why not explore japan why not go to canada mm-hmm. see, three years you can work in canada you get to stay in canada so why just settle for us you can just that's it's really good nice. it's definitely great if you get to you know you want to stay or you want to develop your life here that's also perfectly fine but personally i would prefer to you know just keep exploring more options as well okay that's a great answer you didn't actually answer my question but yeah i will take your answer <laughs> so uh the next question is describe your journey right from the asms iot to uh, landing in us you know doing ms in us in three mm-hmm. words how would you describe it in three words no oh, three words Mm. Okay. Uh, fight for it I would say because fight for every opportunity that you get. There will be a lot of competition. It's it's unbeatable. It's uh, you might feel it's unbeatable but then just fight for it whatever you want in your life. Just push all your limits. just go ahead yeah. be it anything any opportunity in your undergrad go fight for it be it your job opportunities fight for it and a masters fight for it because we just have to do that at the end of the day that's a great learning like you know we should learn this from that fight for everything what you want to achieve in your life nothing yeah. is going to come easy to you correct nothing is going to be served on a silver platter so just go ahead fight yeah. for it <laughs> uh we are finished with the rapid fire uh-huh uh ma'am do you want to say uh, something mohini i would like to ask you one question here you sure. have been really very active in the college participating volunteering and so many uh-huh. activities but i would like to know now being a alumnus uh-huh. how would you like to contribute to our college oh ma'am i can definitely have more sessions like these because i really like talking to people and students every time yeah. like i have been okay. even reached out by many of my juniors like you know they ask me for some advice sometimes it becomes difficult to you know just tend to each one of them individually maybe such sessions right. can help me as well to you know just send out the message together so that you know everyone can benefit it at the same time or uh, i am not sure when i would come back to india but then maybe if i do then i can I definitely visit and you know give the sessions in person as well so. thank you that will be so great always we would also like to have you more for some technical sessions on various latest uh, technologies uh, in the current market scenario and we would be very happy if you come and guide the students to some expert sessions on the latest technologies or whatever you are learning there so we would be happy to have you for that too uh, sure, under the definitely. alumni association that we have so we will are looking forward for that from you definitely you. definitely yeah yeah um it was great talking to you mohini and i have learned so much at least like i can talk for myself and i'm sure that everyone has learned something 
like if they want to go for ms even if they don't want to go for ms and if they want to do a job after uh, you know after finishing the undergraduate i think they have learned the networking how to like you have to fight for everything you can't be lazy and you can't be like you yes. know it it would come to me by its own it it won't you have to do it uh, Like the, take the efforts for everything. Yes, and I'm sure everyone has uh, like noted everything, like uh, mm-hmm. mentally at least. That like what you have told, it was really helpful. Uh, I will just request everyone. Can they please uh switch on the camera so we can take some photos, so we can have a memory of it of this event. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I think I've clicked some photographs. Oh, so no. Shivani or uh, Mohini, I would also like to know one question. Like, what is the uh, suggestion or the message you would like to give to our students? Okay. So the only message that I have, uh, you know, is uh, just believe in what you do as well. like if, don't be disheartened if you you know don't get good grades on some subjects or you feel you know you're not doing your best everyone around you is achieving something amazing and you're just in one place no it's it's never like that so don't compare yourself like okay we sometimes in india we have the habit to compare ourselves a lot to our you know Very peers and everyone yeah. so just don't do that don't be like okay you don't have the skills or something if you don't have it go learn about it If you feel that okay, you need to do something, do something about it. But just don't be disheartened that okay, okay, I'm not good enough for this, or I cannot do this. I don't have this. So just mm-hmm. believe in yourself. You can do it. So you know that's all I would like to say. Hello. That was uh, may I ask a question? question? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello, Mohini. Uh, have you thought about masters in India, like uh, ME or M Tech? uh i was you know gonna go for mba <laughs> to be honest uh it was after i met a career advisor they told me that you know you are from a computer science background you've been working in the it industry then why would you like to you know switch over to something that you know like a cs program as well again so i was initially you know planning on going for mba because i liked you know marketing related activities or doing you know talking to people so you know i like people skills as well so i thought i'll do something in mba but then it's like i was like okay but i've been working as a data scientist i like do, doing my work as well and there are career opportunities equally available so i was still working in like with my feet in two different puddles and i'm like i was like okay i need to come out of it so uh, it's like i then spoke with my elder brother as well he has done his mba in the united states as well so i realized okay uh, after he told me what he has studied everything i was like okay this might not really be what i want to do then i reached out to my seniors like you know who are have who are pursuing or have pursued masters in the us i asked like okay what is your experience and you know what are you doing or where are they working so after that i came to realize okay no i want to do masters only in computer science then i was like okay should i do it from india or should i do it from the us so then i realized okay what i want to do it's still not of the level that like the data science program in india i'm not saying it's bad it's just that uh, here you know you have professionals who are already working and at the same time they are teaching you that so they are like on their feet literally and they are teaching you the technology so just i wanted to you know gain a bit of that experience as well that's why i chose to come to the us and do my computer science program like uh, all my professors they you know they work part time so they come to the university teach their subject and they just go to work again so you know that is a culture that i you know really inspired me i'm like okay that is something really amazing you know like because they literally it's like there is a good data science program in pune as well i know from mit so that is also good so like it's it's not about the place you choose to do it from but then um uh, elder brother was here as well so i just wanted to come and you know do, do it here so yeah. 
Yeah, uh, how was I like answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. And how were the uh, initial days of settling in US like? Were you homesick? I wasn't homesick until today when we are just speaking about home but then yeah uh, it's just that you know everyone around me had some relative who was you know helping them out so for me it was like i had to do it from scratch i know my brother is here but we are literally on the opposite coast lines so it's it's like i still haven't met him so i don't know i think probably i'll meet him over christmas but then it was like i did get a bit homesick so uh, like in the last few days i was you know missing home missing my friends missing my college and everything my college friends session the undergrad ones so it's like uh, you do get a bit homesick but then uh, it's like you have to accept it it's a part of your journey so you will be fine it, it's going to be fine you're going to meet so many people that you know you will just enjoy the journey again yeah and like uh, after getting your ms completing your ms and gaining mm-hmm. some certain amount of experience in us uh, mm-hmm. af- if you think of coming back to india w- would that degree will be valid in india yes it is definitely it is it's like many people uh, i am not sure if i remember uh, but then there have been people who have done their masters and then they've come back to india they settled in india they doing their jobs in india in bangalore and pune so it's it's not necessary that if you you know take a degree from here and you gain some basic experience you cannot go back to your country and you know the degree would you know be invalid or something it's always valid so don't worry like that it's going to be fine i had a question um now as we know that uh, you did your internship and job in uh, data science so why mm-hmm. didn't you choose a masters in data science and why did you choose a masters in computer engineering like csc okay that's uh, that's a very good question harsh so uh, i had got admitted into data science program as well so from uh, sunny buffalo i'm not sure if you guys know that university so i got it from northeast university yeah so sunny and- buffalo and uh, these guys did offer me the data science program and i was like okay this is fair because i've done my experience and everything but then i realized their program is for one year and then i didn't want to be in the us for just one year and i no- realized that you know the universities that offer cs they also offer subjects like data science machine learning parallel you know computing everything like data algorithms so i wanted to build a general profile as well i know i did my that's why i did my undergrad in it right and then oh, i did my work experience in data science but then when i want to apply for a job i don't want to just have one skill and you know go in the market i want to have all the skills that are you know an overall person so it's it's always a good to be a master of all also sometimes but yeah just i just wanted to you know learn everything so i chose computer science and it's usually helpful if it's a two degree program because there are advantages of choosing a stem course that you get to be in the us for another 3 years so you get 2 years of your degree plus 3 years of your stem extension program which helps you stay in the us for 5 years so that is why i chose you know computer science and mba programs they have just one year as well so it is just one year or like two years of your und- uh, like your masters program and one year of uh, work permit and for data science it would have, it would have been one year less definitely because it would have been just one years program and then three years so four years you would get so with that perspective also i chose to you know just go with cs thank you yeah sure Can I ask a I question? Yeah, go for it. Um, can you please tell us about your expenses, like your living and other? Also, if you applied for any scholarship and stuff. Okay, so uh, going ahead with the first thing that my expenses. Okay, they are a lot in California. Like, trust me, <laughs> it's the most expensive, yeah. one of the most expensive states on the West Coast. but uh, it's again if you choose a city like mine is a city okay it's like it's bit in between two cities like san francisco and san jose so it's in between so again it's again costly but if i would have chosen uh, another university like you know csu chico or something or you know that would have been a cheaper university my expenses would have been less so it's again about how you want to manage them right so like if you want to manage you can probably take up an on campus job now uh, the scenario with that currently is my university asked us all of us to wait for two weeks 
because we cannot just start working as soon as we enter the US because it needs to be registered in the government's or you know portal that you are coming here as a student so i am sure like all of you who are planning would eventually want to do some on campus job to you know manage your expenses so initially there is this hurdle that you know uh, at least i am facing right now that i am not allowed to work like i had my ssn appointment just yesterday yeah like we had it yesterday so it's like you know you're not allowed to work so by that time you know if you have taken up you have your some savings you know financial funding from your parents and you have taken an education loan so initially you'll have to manage on that but i think eventually down the line i have seen people doing on campus jobs and clearing their loans within a year and or two years at max and you know they're good to go so at least by the time you've done your degree and you've completed your op- uh, cpt extension or something or opt extension you will you know have enough funds with you to clear out your loans if you're worried about that and my living expenses are a bit high on the uh, like on the higher end because i've chosen to be in a you know uh, chosen a city that is in a sandwich between two big cities so they are on the higher end like or uh, comparatively really high because i know i have a, a you know a friend who who has also come for his masters and he's in texas so his entire month's expense is what is just my rent so it's like his entire month of expense that includes his groceries his utilities his travel and everything and that is just equivalent to my rent so now you all can imagine that my expenses would again be more for my groceries and everything so It, it, and it's manageable don't stress out okay that okay abhi bahut kharcha ho gaya or something is going to be a lot no it is going to be manageable just it takes time so don't worry about that it, it will be it, it's it's possible don't worry um hi mm-hmm. nandini uh, i wanted to ask that did you apply to any of the assistantships and uh, graduate or mm-hmm. assistantships there Okay so uh, some universities allow you to apply for teaching assistantships right from the beginning in our university or i am not sure it could be a common thing in the other universities as well we cannot apply until we have some gpa to show them so we need to at least have taken that subject so that you can apply for a teaching assistantship with that professor so and that professor needs to know that you you know you need to approach them in person here everything needs to be done in person like if you want to uh, but yeah we need to apply through work day only so I, uh, right now we are not getting those opportunities because we, i just i mean my first mine is a quarter based system not a semester based system so i'm just in my first quarter and after i you know give my exam and everything and i get a good grade then i will be considered for a ta and again there's a competition always so you have to you know ensure that while you are trying to explore the country and enjoy and everything but you cannot forget why you are here so we have to be on your toes again and you know seek every opportunity it's like me and my roommates all of us are from cs background we all are applying for the same post so you know the competition again gets down to your roommate level as well so it's fine you don't need to ever you know ruin the relationship for that but just know that your competition is with so many people because there are too many people applying for the same post so just uh be patient but yeah you and you can choose your subjects you can ask your seniors you know like whichever university you are going to how did they apply from where did they get to know or if they can refer you and if they can refer you it's amazing we lost that opportunity to ask our seniors because you know all of it was under like in during the covid time so to find seniors is only a big thing for us right now because all of them were also you know studying remotely even they were in their respective countries so it's a it's a bit of a task so but then you know they usually organize some events where you meet your seniors or something so eventually you get to know them so just network again it's like you have to network with them so this is my question can i ask question now yeah definitely go ahead uh, so this is my personal question so one of my uh, one of my friend is in ohio in cincinnati mm-hmm. university he's doing his phd and he asked me that he told me that he can refer me he gave me he can give me a reference and by uh, giving my resume to the professor so would that be helpful for me and how would be it helpful for me oh well see i had also tried a referral thing for my admission uh, in northeastern university because my brother graduated from there but then they told me that the university doesn't accept that it's like uh, you need to really understand if the university accepts it 
maybe whoever you know told you that could be like just get make sure if it does help you then it really does help you because you might just end up wasting your time for the application and there's a money always involved with every application so just okay. be careful when you're applying because uh, it's usually something around 150 dollars per application mm. on an average right. that goes into it so just don't blindly apply but then if he says that the referral will really help you understand if someone else has been referred and they have got that opportunity and then check if you you know are, are you know you have your chance or not for the same okay so if i go through the referral program and mm-hmm. they do had their referral program the i got mm-hmm. the email of the university so if mm-hmm. i got a referral program then i don't have to go to the application process the whole tedious application process sop and everything or uh, if they say so then it may be like that but then as far as i know you still have to do the application only your name of that referral thing would have been you know be you know you will be asked to enter that somewhere like because even i was okay. filling the application form i just had to enter my brother's name over there and probably you know oh. write some student id or something that this student you know is referring me but then they told me that we don't you know like consider students referral so it's like if there some professor is referring you or something like that that can help but then it again depends on the university uh, how they okay. are going to approach it because like see you know what i have noticed is like they might give the opportunity to someone who's from there like from america itself mm-hmm. like america. an american university so they will preferably give an opportunity to someone who might be a relative of the professor you see mm-hmm. like we are still at a competitive level with them as well. so you just find out if someone you know who got through that and is you know who can get, guide you better on how to make sure that you get that opportunity and just make sure you follow the deadlines you know because the deadline is mm-hmm. super important if they say that the deadline to apply is 1st of september it means that you definitely should have started from the starting date because it, they follow a queue system like a proper queue system like first come first serve right so just be careful don't just go for deadlines start as early as you can apply you know like that will help you gain you know scholarships as well like if you really want scholarships and you know the university that is going to provide you a scholarship just apply early that's all i can say there are two questions mm-hmm. uh, similar in the chat box that it uh, they are asking that whether one should uh, do some job get experience and then go for ms or it is advisable to do ms right after the graduation uh to be honest after my experience i feel i will have an added advantage of you know knowing certain professional skills that the freshers might not know like i have dealt i have dealt with clients i have dealt with project and i know like what goes in a team what are the deadlines to be followed the etiquettes to be followed so i have already covered that bridge so i know that i don't have to do it again so when a company will hire me they know they don't have to waste time on me for training me again for those things like even i had those professional training courses in my company when i joined it was like for 21 days or something 15 days we had a nice extensive program where you know different leadership team used to come and talk but we didn't work right we just got the salary so company will think about money they won't think usually about the people so it's like the company had to wait right that much time to put you on some project mm-hmm. so if i have some experience the company knows that they don't have to waste time on me to train me about something they know that from my prior experience i would have already gained those skills so i will get the project easily i'll get the job opportunity easily the fresher part uh, is also not bad but then it's like i would recommend if you can get if you're doing ms in cs or cs related fields it's better if you have at least a year or two of experience before you come here if you have more then you might be asked why do you want to do it now it's like if you have too much of an experience or they might ask you why do you want to do it and you should have a valid answer like mm-hmm. like if you really need those skills then it's otherwise you can be rejected during your visa interview you might not re- get an uh, you know a, like you won't be rejected probably for the admission but you can be rejected during your visa interview as well so be careful yeah i hope your questions are being answered dear students please do fill up the attendance and the feedback form so mm-hmm. shivani do we have some more questions just uh, have one 
or anybody wants to yeah there is one more question apart from our major subjects do we have freedom to choose other classes definitely it's just that there are three core subjects that we really have to choose apart from that we have certain like just the way we have ordered courses right here we get to choose our subjects also up from those kind of you know category like or they are of two units or something and there are other courses that you are free to choose it, it see it's like some universities have 30 to 33 credits uh, that they need to complete in two years my university has 46 credits requirement which i have to complete in two years so uh, it depends again uh, like the minimum core uh, you know the credit courses are like four units so my 12 units are already gone over there so the rest of the units i have the liberty of choosing which courses i want to do and sometimes it's also about maintaining your gpa so sometimes ask your seniors and understand which courses will really help you get a job as well as maintain your gpa at the same time so just you know i'll suggest that to you guys as well okay uh, can you please tell about scholarship for tuition fees i think you have already spoken about this right? spoken about it right mm -hmm. yeah you oh. need to understand that it changes for every university mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. every university has different rules criteria and everything so, like some universities that i applied to really wanted only applications for the scholarship so since my started my application late so i was very close to the deadline so i couldn't get a chance to fill the form like you know with a proper uh, you know format or something so uh, but then i didn't go to that university so i really didn't you know check what happened of the you know status of that but then it's like if you want scholarships uh, and yes for tuition fees you do get waivers like if you got a good scholarship you you know some of your tuition fee can be waived off uh, i am not taking my example but my brother had received a scholarship of you know 22000 dollars or something and his annual uh, was of something 55000 dollars so he got at least one third of his tuition fee waived off so it's like if you try you can get it definitely if you apply early as well so that's possible okay okay and uh, like someone has a question that um, can you please tell how how to pursue masters in abroad what are processes to be followed to take admission in abroad like okay. in us so first thing is you need to understand do you really want to do it like is it really worth investing your time and money because it's like you are going to invest not your money to be honest you're going to invest your parents money right initially so do you really think you want to do it once you know that okay you really want to do it are you ready to put in those efforts because it's it's not a cake walk it's not a cake walk if you remember we all have given je jwe so it's going to take efforts similarly this exams will also take efforts it will need your time so if you are ready to invest all that and then you know because you want to be technically earning like for me it was it is a stop to my earning background right i have stopped earning since after gaining 2 years of experience and then i've come here so you need to be mentally prepared like you know whatever is going to come you're going to deal with it be it anything so you need to develop all that mindset and then you know you start with the process of you know understanding uh, what is the syllabus of the exams what are the costs involved how many like how many universities are you planning on applying to which all universities uh, are you planning on applying to what are scores are you getting so once you give your mock exams and everything you'll get an idea like what is your you know range score range based on that you can finalize your universities and everything and then you know you will get through uh, like once you start receiving your admits you can then start applying for a visa the visa process uh, you know it was sad that for our time it was really difficult for people to get visas because everyone you know was doing it from uh, home right from remotely and now everyone wanted to come to the us at for fall 2021 including the people who started in winter spring or you know something like that so the visa process is also a bit scary people don't usually em emphasize on that but then it it takes time it, to get a slot it's not easy so once you get the visa slot then you have to prepare for the interview again the interview is taken by you know a us citizen only so you need to be very much sure of what you are saying to the interviewer you cannot be or even a little bit you know you cannot think of even using slangs ever or just 
we have some uncertain answers to them because they can reject you just at the blink of an eye. So just be careful. And then finally, when all is done, you can book your tickets, pack your bags, and you're good to go. Right. You have to be very careful while uh, answering the visa questions. Even I have heard yeah, yeah, about it. It's not it. like I'm trying to scare you guys. It's just mm-hmm. that you know you need to know the reality of it. Everyone says, "Ha, ah, MS karne jana. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be fun. Everything. It's gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna go to, to US. Everything nice. Good. Be happy about that. But understand what you're you know keeping at stake. Whatever you're you know, it, it's your parents' money. Don't mm-hmm. forget that. Just remember that. Until you're at least earning and return, you've returned back everything. So be responsible right. about whatever you decide to do. Right. I think we have answered. You have answered most of the questions. Right. Even I am now out of questions. You have answered everything. Yeah. Is there any more question in the chat? I or someone wants to speak up. I am good to you know answer them. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think we have uh, read out all the questions. Yeah. It is quite late for Mohini too because the time, uh, the uh, time, instant time yeah. over there. So uh, yeah. no, uh, I would. I think now we'll conclude the session and. Uh, I would like to thank you, Mohini, on behalf of IT department and Alumni Association of AISSMS IOIT. I also take this opportunity to thank you, our management and principal, Dr. P. B. Mane. I uh, thank uh, our HOD Madam of IT who has been constantly guiding us and supporting us for all such events. And I thank you, uh, Minil Sopeman, the head of Alumni Association and all my coordinators of alumni association i thank you all the students for their participation their interaction and uh, thank you so much shivani for really hosting the program very well i thank you all the teachers teaching and non teaching staff who are here so thank you so much and most importantly thank you so much mohini again for being here and really being so nice and honest and sincerely answering all the questions so patiently so thank you for your time thank you so much ma'am thank you everyone for listening and thank you shivani you were a wonderful host today thank you so much <laughs> so again thank you. before leaving students please uh, fill up the attendance and get back form and that's the request from my side and yeah so we can conclude the session and uh, looking forward to see you Mohini again with some more workshops and webinars on uh, technical yeah, uh, subjects too. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you, ma'am. For the, for the journey. Goodbye. Yes. Bye bye. All the best to everyone. Bye bye. Bye. So, Shivani, I would also leave because I have class now. Students, please fill the um, form as soon as possible because the meeting is, meeting is going to end in a moment. Uh, the, the link is given above in the chat box. You can see it there. I'll just post it again. The links are posted in the chat box. Please fill the forms, uh, the attendance link and the feedback form.